Hello, everyone. In this lesson, we will introduce the synchro panel of the main switchboard. The synchro panel is the most powerful control panel in the main distribution board. It is also the most frequently touched panel. In this panel, there are many indicators and meters to monitor the operation of the generator. The three power meters above are used to display the current power of the three generators. The power meter does not start at zero, but start with negative values. This means that the power meter can display a negative value. When the pointer indicates below zero, this indicates that the generator is already working in reverse power. This is a synchrometer. The synchrometer is a piece of instrument used in parallel operation. The phase difference is indicated by rotating the indicator light. If the parallel operation mode is in menu, ideally, the frequency of the incoming machine is about 0.1 Hz higher than the frequency of the power grid. The corresponding synchronization table turns once every 5 seconds. The closing time was about 11 o'clock. It's safe to close in this area. Closing this area early or beyond will cause too much shock current and may cause the closing failure. In severe cases, the generator running on the network will be removed and caused the whole ship lost the power. This instrument is used to show the frequency of the incoming and current generator. Two frequencies can be displayed in this meter. Divide it into tables 1 and 2, which table 1 shows the current power grid frequency. Table 2 shows frequency of the incoming generator. You can use the synchro select switch between the synchronizing panel to select which generator frequency to display. This switch determines which generator frequency shows in the two frequency meter. If number one generator is already in the grid, now we need to connect number two generator to the bus bar. At this time, the synchro select switch should be chosen in G2. Under normal circumstances, the frequency meter pointer of the incoming machine is higher than the current grid pointer reading. This is the voltmeter down here. Same as a frequency table. It's also divided into tables 1 and 2. Table 1 displays the power grid voltage. Table 2 displays the incoming generator voltage. The three on the left are the power factor meters for the generator. The three lights in the middle are used to rotate the lights to parallel operation. If the synchronization table fails, these three indicators are used for parallel operation. When doing parallel operation, adjust the speed of the incoming generator so that the lights of the three indicators rotate clockwise. With the upper lamp dark and the lower lamps bright, it's the best time to close. In the middle area of the synchronizing panel are stators and alarm lights. These three indicator lights are the diesel generator stators indicator and alarm lights. The two above are the standby sequence indicator lights of the generator. If the mode of three generators are set to automatic, when there is only one generator running, and the load on the grid increases, a generator needs to be started for grid connection. The power management unit will issue a start order to the first generator. Which generator to start first needs to be set manually. 
You can set the priority of the diesel generator on the standby select switch below the sync panel. For example, switch to the position 2-3-1. If this is number 2 generator running on the grid, when equipment needs to be loaded up, and number 2 generator does not have enough power merging to carry the additional loads on the grid, the power station management unit will issue a start order to number 3 generator. Make it start and connect it to the grid power supply because number 3 generator is in the first standby state. Number 1 generator is in a second standby state. In the same way, if this is number 3 generator or number 1 generator on the grid, the first standby is number 2 generator. So the standby indicator depends on the position of the standby sequence selector switch. The following indicators are the indicator for abnormal operation of diesel generator. They are starting failure of diesel generator. Circuit breaker abnormal trip. Circuit breaker close fail. Circuit breaker open fail. Prime motor failure and fault of overcurrent. There will be a flash after the alarm. And this buzzer will go off. The sequence of alarm processing is Press this button to silence the alarm. After silencing the alarm, the alarm needs to deflash the alarm. Press this button to deflash the alarm. If the alarm is eliminated, when you press this button, the flash of the alarm will disappear. If the alarm is not eliminated, after pressing this button, the alarm flash will become zero dead orbiter. This is a light and buzzer test button. This section is some alarm information related to bus bar, including insulation anomalies, voltage anomalies, frequency anomalies, and emergency generator status. Because the status of the emergency generator in the switchboard needs to be known in real time. If the emergency generator is not on standby, the ship grid is unreliable. The loss of power from the main grid will leave the ship without power. So in ship operations, it is necessary to ensure that the emergency generator is in standby state at all times. And the condition of the emergency generator should be monitored on the main switchboard. This is the emergency switchboard automatic mode indicator. In auto mode, when the emergency generator is standby, the emergency generator can accept the instructions of the emergency switchboard after the main switchboard is out of power. Automatically start the emergency generator and automatically connect it to emergency switchboard for powering for the emergency equipment. This is the emergency generator circuit break closing. Running. Start fail. Isolation circuit break open indicator. This is the priority trip indicator. Indicates whether the priority trip power supply is available. Whether there's a fault and whether the priority trip is triggered. These two are the bus tie circuit break closing and opening indicator lights. The bus tie circuit break refers to the switch between the emergency switchboard and the main switchboard, which close to the emergency switchboard. That's the switch. This circuit break is automatically controlled. If the main switchboard loses power, 
the bus tie circuit brake should be opened. If the main switchboard has power, the bus tie circuit brake should be closed. Let the main switchboard supply power for the emergency switchboard. This is the indicator of DC 24 volt source availability. Whether the battery discharge is available. Common alarm. Load share on balance indicator. If there's something wrong with the PPU, it can lead to unbalanced load share. Then will trigger the alarm. These two are the starting request indicators for the high power load. In order to avoid the impact of high power load starting on the power grid of the ship, you need to set a limit. Before the high power load to start, you need to make a request first. It shall not be allowed it to start until it has been confirmed by the main switchboard by the engineer manager. At this time, the engineer manager needs to confirm whether the power merging of the grid is enough. It is not allowed it to start if the power merging is insufficient. If a high power load start request is issued in automatic mode, the station management unit shall start the standby generator set automatically first. After the standby generator set is connected to the grid, the power merging of the grid is sufficient. Then is it allowed it to start the high power load? The six lighted buttons are used to control the menu closing and opening of the three diesel generator circuit breaker. The following buttons are related to semi-automatics operation. This button commands the diesel generator to synchronize, connect to the grid, distribute the load, and start automatically. Only when the diesel generator is in standby mode. Pressing this button will automatically start the generator and automatically frequency modulation and connect the network. This is a load shift button. Press this button to release the number one diesel generator. It will first transfer the load to the generator in the grid. When the power of the generator to be released is close to zero, it's going to give the open command. Let the main switch open. This is the sync and load shift cancel button. This button is measured to avoid misoperation. For example, now press the button of number one generator input sync. The power station management unit of the power station will issue instructions to start the generator. If at this point, we find that the power meter is wrong. There is no need to connect number one generator to the grid. Press the cancel button before closing. Then it won't do anything else. If the generator already started, then the generator will run idle. It will not close. So is load transfer. When you press the number one generator load shift button, the light will stay on after the button is pressed. Indicates that a load shift is underway. At this point, if you press the load shift cancel button, then the load transfer process is cancelled. These three are the governor knobs of the generator. The frequency of the generator is adjusted by these three knobs when doing the generator parallel operation manually. Manual load transfer after the parallel operation is also through the three knob. This is a mode selection knob. Diesel generators have three modes of operation in the management of power stations. There are menu, semi-automatic, and automatic modes. This knob 
is used to switch the current voltmeter and frequency meter to display the current bus frequency and voltage or the short frequency and voltage. This is the introduction of main switchboard synchro panel.